Good morning, everybody. How are all you doing today? Good, good. My name is Christian Merchant. I am the manager of public programs with the York County History Center. And thank you for coming to our first second Saturday of 2023. So we are ringing in the new year uh, with Jack Graham of the Keystone Marker Trust. Uh, so today, Jack Graham, a founding member of the trust, is Pittsburgh born and raised and a retired Pennsylvania State Park manager. Jack has personally repaired and repainted over 75 of these markers. Interested in many other aspects of history as well, Jack and his wife are longtime volunteers, like housekeepers at sites across the US and Canada. The keystone markers of Pennsylvania are cast iron town and stream name signs that are erected along the roadsides of the Commonwealth almost 800 years ago by the former State Department of Highways and so named because of their keystone, uh, keystone shape. Uh, the Keystone Marker Trust is largely responsible for the care and preservation of these markers, and is a small, all-volunteer, nonprofit group with an unfathomable attraction to these old hunks of iron, as John, uh, Jack has told me. <laughs> the Trust volunteers work to document all of these markers, and that are still are, or once were, and to repair and restore those that remain, often working with local governments, historical groups, and individual volunteers. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Jack Graham. Thank you, Christian. Um, the Keystone Marker Trust is, as I said in that brief introduction, a small group of guys who just sort of found each other. Uh, my wife, Toby, of course, if any of you are belong to any organization, you know how supportive the spouse must be. She puts up with a lot of this, quite a help to the organization as well. Uh, what you see before you is a picture of what we call a keystone marker. They're about this long, about this high. You see a uh, replica of one over there. I used to carry around the cast iron one, but that got a little bit annoying. So uh, I had that one made out of Corianne by the tech schools over Gettysburg, the group that's repaired and restored quite a few of them. Uh, rather than the simple sign you see today, which says name of town, you know, name of village, these tell you quite a bit. Uh, not only the name of the town, some little bit of information about it, when it was founded. And the very top line is important. That tells you the name of and the distance to the next town down the road as the traveler is going. Okay. Uh, McKnight's town, a little town over in Adams County. I like to think this probably scene hasn't changed much in the hundred years since they put that sign up. <laughs> it welcomed you to the town you were coming to. Another example of that, Stony Creek Mills. Uh, again, they were they were pretty much commonplace. They were all over the Pens Pennsylvania from A. Anybody know where Airville is? <laughs> <laughs> The day I took that, the building on the right is a cow barn. And the, certainly the air in the neighborhood didn't smell very pure the day I took that photograph. <laughs> All the way to C. A to Z. You had to be on the state road. Any time it was on the state road, the numbered road, federal back in the 1920s, got at least two of these things. We don't know if the town had to apply for them or if the highway department just came along and put them up. But typically a town got two if they were on that road. You see, the only difference between those two is that top line. You can tell which one was at what end of town by what it said up there at the top. These, of course, are no longer on the road. They're now hanging on the wall at the township building and why they decided to paint them in two different colors. They probably had two different volunteers do the job. Uh, York had many of them. To my knowledge, it only has this one left, and that might not still be there. These things can be here today and gone tomorrow. The snow plow is the biggest predator of the Keystone Marker, uh, and also lousy drivers. Okay, uh, so there may be more around here, but that's the only one we know about. Hanover has the most of any town that we're aware of in Pennsylvania. It still has at least seven of them. Now you'll notice. That that uh, Toby in the bottom of that bag is my pointer. In that plastic bag that the cords were in, 
Uh, you'll notice that that top line is not there. It used to be. Oftentimes, when these signs got relocated, somebody chiseled that off because it wasn't true anymore. <laughs> Yeah, up there, it would have been that, that, that top line. And it's also no longer on an original post. It's on just a piece of pipe now. So uh, I'm sure it was not in that location originally. This is a list, and I have it in writing here. It's a little hard to read there. Those are the towns in York County that once had Keystone markers. York was the third highest county in numbers of signs that we know about. Now, how many of them are still there? We don't know. You notice what I say down here. A York County spotter. If anybody has a great desire to be a Keystone marker spotter, your responsibilities are simply to check them out. Are they still there? <laughs> do they need work? If they do, do you own a paintbrush? <laughs> or I spend a lot of my time testering townships and boroughs to try to do something with them. Okay, uh, here's one that uh, is in York County, and it was just trucked with a car a week ago. I'm on my way after this program to pick up the pieces. See what I have here? That letter S is going to be in front of that P when I get done putting the piece back on that sign. Okay, this is fiberglass, fiberglass and epoxy to a uh, job at the uh, cast iron. I'm not a metal worker. I can't work cast iron, but I can do stuff like that. Uh, the whole town of Philadelphia probably had dozens. This was the only one that we were aware of. You can see it sort of took a bad hit. That was taken down, the post was taken down, painted up, returned to the city of Philadelphia, and two years later, it's still sitting in a storage shed. So, we can only do so much. Pittsburgh probably had one at each of these locations at least. A town that had more than one road that came together would have had multiple signs. We don't know any in Pittsburgh any longer. Harrisburg, the town, uh, what they call Pembroke, now part of the city of Harrisburg. If you head out, uh, Old 22, like you're going to, just to the east of Pine, you can see that one still sitting on the corner. And uh, 23 miles from Jonestown. That's the only one that we know of in the whole Harrisburg area anymore. What? They're not. Our keystone markers are not the historical markers of the Pennsylvania Museum uh, and uh, you know, Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission. These are aluminum. They tell a whole lot more about some person, place, or thing. When I first get into this, I sort of assumed that the Historical Commission had something to do with, with the Keystone. But they don't. They don't want anything to do with them. They're busy enough. <laughs> they have two people for the whole state of Pennsylvania that's their maintenance staff for trying to keep these signs put up. So, so uh, that's the other kind of the historical marker you'll see. This is what they call a tile marker. It's a little narrower sits along city streets much better than, than that other one did. I get lots of people send me pictures of these things and tell me I find one of your markers. Uh, but they are they are totally, totally different program. Where did the markers come from back in the 1920s? They were sort of a, an output of what was called the Good Roads Movement. How many miles of paved road do you think there were in Pennsylvania in 1920? I don't know the answer, not very many. The cars, of course, were just becoming commonplace to the proletariat, so to speak. Um, and there were publications put out. See, this sign is that Keystone sign. This is 1927 publication of the uh, State Chamber of Commerce. The original use of these Keystones was not for town names, but rather for standard highway signs. Steep Hill, School, Curve, speed limit, you know. And it was only in the 1920s that uh, there's a picture from the 1929 Philadelphia uh, Gazette talking about these signs. You see they're all sort of traffic type, type markers. This picture is the oldest 
picture that we know of of one of the keystones as a town site. The town of Tidiut is in the Venango County along the Allegheny River, north of Pittsburgh. This picture was in the 1926 annual report of the Highways Department. The sign really doesn't look brand new, does it? it looks, it looks like it's been there a while. So that's the only way we know for sure that this program started in the early 20s. Uh, <clears throat> this is the road going into Le Moyne. What do you see right here? Keystone marker. Hey, it's still there. <laughs> Roads changed, cars have changed. And I worry about this one because it hangs out over the road. It's sooner or later, it's surprising it hasn't got walked yet, but it's been there a long time. Basically, our group tries to find these signs and make them look good. <clears throat> because they don't look good. Got a chunk out of it here, wrinkled on the bottom. We find a lot of them hidden away in township and borough maintenance sheds, where somebody took them down, probably with the good intention of doing something, and then, then no, I, I, I should have backed up a minute. You saw the Landisburg one there? That was in a shed in the borough of Landisburg in Perry County for 22 years, because it got knocked over. And a town citizen said, I'll fix that up. He took it, he restored it, he cleaned it, he painted it, and then he died. And nobody else had the gumption to put it in the ground. So they stuck it in a township shed where it lingered for 22 years until I accidentally heard about it. <laughs> and now it's back up on the side of the road. Uh, rust, of course, they are cast iron. Uh, this one had originally been painted sort of a red color. We encourage towns to fix them. I don't really care what color they paint. We just want them to fix them up if they can. Barry's burn, not only rusted, but painting. This one's now gone. I've been through Barry's burn many a time looking for that, and who knows? Again, cast iron is, it won't wear out, but it's brittle. And oftentimes, this is what you find. You find a chunk of it missing because it got hit with something. Uh, Repton, again, another one that's been painted red and uh, right. You see, you get a little bit of a glimpse of the pole here. The poles were quite fancy as well. They were a squarish pole and the top part was round. Uh, we'll see a picture a little later of what one of the back of those things look like. They, there's two bands on the back that fit down over the top of the post, which is round and then tighten up. Uh, this is a common situation. Fortunately, I happened to go by that time where, while the other piece was laying right here in the back. Uh, dumb luck, but uh, we got it. We put it back together and uh, put it back on the post where it belonged. This is one that I uh, saw driving on the road that's bolted to the side of some guy's shit up in, uh, well, Muncie. You know where Muncie is? Up top, yeah, up east, up on uh, 15. East McKeesport is a suburb of Pittsburgh. Yet this marker is on a post outside a hunting camp in Elk County. I can only assume that the people that own that camp are from East McKeesport, but I, I don't know that. York Springs. Obviously, this is a piece. We found a piece, we put it back together. And it's back on the road along 74, I guess that's 94 from the down to, uh, to uh, York Springs. Sometimes they're beyond hope. This is what happens when an MG runs into a post. Not only is the post in several pieces, but uh, so is the sign. And this sign had already been missing its left end when that thing was run over. So uh, some of them take a bad hit along the way. Chambersburg, it's another one that uh, just was hit by a vehicle only two weeks ago. And uh, we're gonna put that one back together again. But what's really sad is, I'm gonna see a picture in a minute here. That particular sign, along with another one, were tucked away in the Chambersburg maintenance shed for years. We found them, we fixed them, we put them up, and then somebody ran over them. 
So that's that's why. Oftentimes we only find the post. Who knows where to sign it? Long gone. Sometimes you'll find it in the bushes, but often not. If we don't find them, PennDOT will pull those posts for us. We'll clean them up, paint them up, and use them somewhere else. Because as you saw in the one from Hanover, a lot of them are just going around pipe out there. So we will try to reutilize those posts if we can. Another example of a of a long empty post that uh, is now in my backyard waiting to be painted. Sometimes we find out about them strangely. This is a clipping from a newspaper article, 1947. And guess what? Pendlot was doing some work along the side of the road. What did they find hidden in the dirt? I could tell you stories all day, somebody's stories about the, the strangeness of some of these things. Kinzu, do you know where Kinzu is? Okay, up on the Allegheny River, north of Pittsburgh. This, the town of Kinzu is now many feet under the waters of Kinzu Reservoir. This was also part of the old Corn Planter Indian Reservation years and years ago. Um, what became of the sign? We have no, no idea. That photo was taken obviously long before the reservoir came and I think it was built in the, in the 60s. Uh, this one was on eBay. Don't know who bought it. Where were they made? We know of two places that made these signs. This is the back of one. The name is branded in here. You see the letters go down into the middle. The Carlisle Foundry in Carlisle, PA, long out of business. And sometimes you don't see all of that. If there's enough letters here, but we know that used to say Carlisle Foundry. The other place, the Geisler Manufacturing Company down in Waynesboro, PA. Again, long out of business. Geisler was a huge manufacturer of uh, iron stuff, farming equipment, all sorts of things. Many of them have those names on the back. Many say nothing at all. So we do not know if they were made by those same companies. Uh, obviously, they were the state, which had to do some bidding. So it makes sense that there were other manufacturers somewhere along the way, but we've never found any evidence of anything but Geiser and, uh, and Carla. Is the information always right? Well, not necessarily. You know where my wolf is? Okay, well, see, this one too was, had the top line taken off. I first found out about this sign some years ago when I was told the mayor has it in his basement. Oh, I contacted the mayor, I forget his name now, several mayors ago. And the town decided that, yes, Mount Wolf was named for George Wolf, but not this one. <laughs> not the wolf that was the governor, some other George Wolf. So they took him down. Now, where the other one went, again, the town would have had at least two. It's right, I forget what the route number is, it goes up along the river there. But the town would have had two of them. Uh, so they gave it to us. Mayor got tired of passing it on to their next mayor, and uh, it, I donated it to the Historical Museum Commission, so they have at least one of these in their, in their collection. Guy by the name of Colonel Henry Shoemaker, probably Pennsylvania's first folklorist. He was uh, the super commissioner, whatever, the Historical Commission, the predecessor of PHMC, and uh, this is a quote from a report. Henry Shoemaker and Albert Cook Myers actively engaged in securing historical accuracy. Were they always right? Well, we not. Shoemaker has a reputation for making up history when he doesn't like the real version <laughs> or doesn't know the real version. So who knows? Uh, we oftentimes get people contact us that found a date on the bottom. People get upset. That's not right. You've got to come and change that. And I tell them that you, you don't change cast iron with white on. So, you know, I'm sorry, folks. You know, that's the way it is. Live with it. All right. We talked about the town name signs. The other most common usage of these is for stream names. Now, this is a double sided song. It says Sherman's Creek on the other side, too. So, if they go and need one on a bridge, and you could read it in either direction. Um, 
This one also was put up a little too close, ended up getting walked. We fixed it, it's now at the other end of the fridge. Uh, here's a historic photo of one of these stream ones. This is the Oil Hannah Creek out in the Westmoreland County. Can't quite read that, but it says Oil Hannah Creek, if you could. Again, dating from the same period, 20s and 30s. Bermudian Creek, along 94. I pestered the township for a long time. Please, look at that sign. Aren't you ashamed of that? And usually what they tell me is, gee, I didn't even notice it was there. These things just sort of fit into the landscape. You know, so guess what one day? They took, they took sign was down. I drove by the signs down. I said, oh, good. They're doing something with it. Well, yeah. Could they have painted the post? No, that was extra. <laughs> Could they have straightened the post? No, that was extra. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't fasten that to the post, and seven months later, somebody stole it, or at least it disappeared. Now, these things really rarely get stolen. I mean, cast iron isn't worth a whole lot at the scrapyard. That thing weighs 67 pounds, okay? It's not something you tuck under your arm and run off with. But that one disappeared. This one we found in a barn up in Emporium, PA, which is about 60 miles from where it belonged. Cook's Run is in Lycoming County, uh, just up north, north uh, near Renova. So again, we used a post from another location, cleaned that up, put it up, had the forestry guys take the post for us, and now it's back where it probably was years and years ago. Mahoopany Creek, Hens Creek. Ooh, anybody know where Tangas Koo Creek is? <laughs> Again, these are double-sided, right? Tangaskou. Ooh, Gastukat Creek, okay? Tangaskutukat. Well, that one, we never did find the other end, so we couldn't repair it. But for a very brief period of time, our group was working with a foundry in Chester County that were actually making replica, good replicas. And they were doing pretty good business, too. PennDOT actually bought this one and put it up when they redid the bridge there. And then the company decided, nah, it's too much bothered. So now people are, I get a call once a month from somebody that wants to buy a new one for their town. And there, there is no place that makes authentic replicas anymore. Uh, oftentimes, this is all we find. The sign, of course, was, was up here. Push the right button, I get it right. Um, you'll see one later. This is the top of the post right here. This is the bottom of the sign. And that part has a pin on it, about a one and a half inch diameter pin that goes down into the top of the post. And you see a set screw there that tightens that up. So oftentimes they get broken off right there. There you see that, that pin down at the bottom. It's another one we found tucked away in a storage shed. Little elbow grease, little paint. They come up looking nice. And got storage shed over at Gettysburg one day. I happened to be wandering around over there. We found a whole bunch. Somebody creatively repaired this one. Oftentimes that pin I showed you gets broken off. So they built a little box that fits down over the top of that post. Creative work. Uh, those two Conewago Creek ones are, are now back up. You know there's two Conewago Creeks in Pennsylvania? They both run into the Susquehanna, one from the west and one from the east. <laughs> Sometimes figuring out where this sign was is part of the fun of it all. <clears throat> uh, remember I showed you that Chambersburg one that was in pieces? That's it. This is where we found them after a search. They cleaned them up, they painted them both up, they put it up, and then somebody covered them. So uh, hopefully in the not too distant future, it'll be back together and back on the roadside. Uh, back to the use of the mistraffic, traffic uh, directional signs. It says Pennsylvania State Highway. This was taken sometime in the 50s, obviously out in Western Pennsylvania, Cumberland, <laughs> Grantsville, of course, we're in Maryland. Give you an idea of where that thing probably was. Columbus, Ohio, 210 miles. Well, guess what I found one day when I was in Historical Museum Commission storage room in Harrisburg? There it is. Same sign, doesn't work a whole lot better, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Mahoopany Creek, 
what they'll do with it, who knows? But it's saved for posterity. Uh, here's another one of that type we found in a private yard. We find a lot of them in people's yards. And the people didn't steal them. What we find out is the people basically rescued them because they were taken down at some point and were going to get scrapped. Somehow they found out about it and said, can I have that? Somebody said, sure, we don't want it. So uh, there's a lot of town name signs. Uh, this particular one, uh, this guy was amenable to uh, getting back where it should have been. It's now painted the colors that these signs were originally, yellow and black. And this is now in the Township Park, along the side of the road in the Township Park. The, the direction, the numbers probably aren't quite right, but, the, <laughs> but it's it's a, Again, I mentioned just their use as, as a different highway signs. Danger. You can see one right here at the, at the intersection. Don't know what it said. But the, and we get a lot of people send us antique pics of them, which we appreciate. School zone. Drive slowly, looks like somebody water ballooned that one because we painted that one up and not so long after we got this big black blob on it. This is about a quarter of a mile from an old country school in uh, Montour County or Wyoming County. A very few of them are basically historical markers. Brown Spring, this is down in the town of Blue Ridge Summit, right on the Pennsylvania Maryland border, commemorating an action during the, during the Civil War. This is at a highway overlook up near north of Muncie Valley. I believe, but I have not yet been able to prove that P.D. Wright, who was once the secretary of the highway department, likely was an instigator in creating this program. I'd like to know that to give the guy credit, but we don't, we haven't ever proved that. I've spent a lot of hours in the state archives trying to look through files and we haven't been able to pin that down, but that's, that's our supposition, and the, the fact that they create, that they put one up for this guy. I mean, there's been a lot of secretaries of highways. This is the only one we know of that has a sign for him out there on the roadside. So. Right, how about this one? This is probably one of the most unusual we've ever seen. This is on uh, 94, just north of, of Gettysburg. Put up by the DAR in 1938. Now, we don't know. Did the DAR buy it from the highway department? Was there some program where you could do that? We, we, we just don't know so much about them. Uh, we do know that this is what it looked like when I found it. Fortunately, the end was there too. And we put the end on, and I'm not a real good painter when it comes to those little letters. My Toby's much better than I am. But, uh, oops. Anyway, we got one of the DAR ladies. <laughs> Depend. Again, that's double-sided. You got all that text on both sides. And it's still sitting there along the way. There are a few odd ones. We call these variants. You notice it's not keystone shape. Um, usually they were for borough names. Borough of such and such, you know, township of such and such. There's probably you know, a dozen of those around that we know of. And probably were more. But uh, this one is in the attic of the Mon Alto Borough Building. And I said, why don't you fix it up and put it outside? Oh, no, somebody will steal it. <laughs> so it sits in the corner of the attic. They almost didn't want to dig it out for me to take a picture. It was like, huh. mm. uh, these aren't keystones or these aren't uh, cast iron. But again, another use that was made of this keystone shaped sign back in that day. Almost every summit along the mountain had a big sign like this. They still have one, but it's just a rectangular sign now. It gives you a name and an elevation. But another use of that keystone motif. Uh, people have done some interesting things with them. Uh, this one is embedded in a wall. Well, nobody gonna steal that one. <laughs> um, this one, it's not up, it's on the, in, in the mayor's office in the town of Alexandria in Huntington County. They have it hanging on the wall proudly. Again, I always try to convince them to at least put it outside where people can see them. A lot of them have been relocated to the yard of the borough hall or the town library 
or you know someplace like that but at least they're in the in the public view so to speak but i obviously you know have no control over that other than urging there's another one miller's town is in ferry county another example of of, uh, you see that that next town was chopped off. Millerstown is actually at the crossroad of two intersections, two state roads, so probably would have had four. It's the only one we know about, and they don't know where any of the others are either. So which of the four roads this was on, we don't know, because that, that next town is, is gone. <clears throat> Port Royal, uh, Juniata County town, they didn't like the yellow trim, um, but at least they saved it. They noticed this post too is a little shorter. Somebody probably ran it over and rather than trying to repair the post, they just popped it in the ground a little shorter. So it's in the yard of the Pearl Hall, so height doesn't matter. Headlot would tell you at the bottom of that thing is supposed to be seven feet above the ground. So that a vehicle going under it wouldn't hit it that way. But as I mentioned, the snow plow, snow plow is the biggest predator of these slides still in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Crescent, if that picture was a little bit better, you'd see another, well, and you may remember that uh, sign from Newville that you saw a little earlier, it only had the left side. Well, I'm betting that one of those sides isn't still on this post, <laughs> but I haven't been through Crescent in a long time to know that. But again, a lot of times we'll relocate these things to, to someplace, and that's good. You know, we have no problem with that. But it would be nice if they repaired it too. Thompson Town, they moved the sign instead of on the road. It's now in their town park. It's good, it's protected. It's in the public view. We like that. Vicksburg, little town up on Route 45 south of Lewisburg. Again, the uh, post is a little shorter. The, you ought to see the one at the other end. It's only about this high off the ground. <laughs> I can only assume that, you know, the posts have been run over at some point. And uh, PennDOT is very big on breakaway signposts. And it's we do an awful lot of arguing telling them that a cast iron post is a breakaway post. <laughs> Although it's surprising, this thing probably has a chunk of concrete on the, on the, on the bottom. Okay? But it's surprising how often when those things are hit. The sign gets shattered, but the post just, just flattens. So that's fine. You know where Cash Town is? Right on Old 30, over between Gettysburg and Chambersburg? Well, this is an original post. And somebody obviously tried to make a replica. And uh, if you would put that replica up, wouldn't you like maybe think about repainting it? Well, no, they didn't do that. But they went out and they bought a little plastic replica. These are the ends of two U-bolts that go around that post that's behind it. And this, we talk about, I don't know, what can I say? <laughs> they didn't even take the UPC label off those things, right? And there it says, I couldn't stand it. I went down there one day with my can of blue paint, painted these things blue. <laughs> Uh, now, how about that one? Town of Beach Creek up in Northern Center County. The original signs, long gone, obviously. And somebody on both ends of town now, there's a big flat stone like that. And they recreated that thing. Now, is that dedication or what? Um, town of Orbiston, which isn't too far from, from there. This is, this is actually engraved into that stone. It's obviously a replica of a marker that was once, once there. So they mean a lot to a lot of people. And other places, people say, oh, we daren't touch it because it belongs to PennDOT. Well, technically, if they're on a state road, yes, they belong to PennDOT. But PennDOT's interest in them is about this big. Their official policy is to encourage local adoption. So if you know one near your house and you'd like to adopt it, go for it. <laughs> I get questions all the time. There's one down the road. Am I allowed to paint it? Heavens, yes. 
There's nobody going to come along and say, stop. Nobody. Uh, sometimes, again, the sign is gone. This is in a Trader Joe's market in the town of Jenkintown. <laughs> There's one of their markers. He even has the next line on I'm sorry, that picture, you can't read it. But, but, you know, obviously, they mean a lot to people. Or they wouldn't go to, go to that bottom. A lot of town official documents have a picture of, of their marker. On them. Some of them are in pretty poor shape. I, I marvel at the quality of the picture that they put on their paper. Uh, basically, this is what we do, folks. We find them like this. We put pieces back on if need be. You know, we paint them, we prime them up, we paint them blue, and then we put them up the way they look. We know that they were blue and gold. The official colors, do we really know? No. But I don't think that matters. Uh, we do use some PPG paints, the ones that we do as official, uh, our official colors, if you will. But if the town wants to, uh, you know, if the town only has one, I'll tell them to get on and get some rust -oleum. You know, you can buy a small can and, you know, much cheaper. But uh, anyhow, a whole, whole sample of uh, what we try to do, take them from here to here to here to here to here. And there's six of us in our group. And there's two of us that do anything. Does that sound like a regular group? <laughs> the others say, yeah, good job, boys. Right? You know, uh, Town, again, another one, Marsh Creek. Uh, Abbottstown is now put together. And another, again, I, I don't want to drag out some of these stories, but when we found the Abbottstown, when we fixed it and gave it to the mayor, yeah, but his term was up. So a new mayor came. And the new mayor wasn't all that interested in it. So again, it sat in a maintenance shed for ages. And every once in a while, I would sort of send them a little prodding email. Hey, did you put that sign up yet? Well, two years later, it finally went back up on, on the road. But that, that's a typical, typical situation. This is that one from Philadelphia. Remember, it had that whole bottom chunk missing? That bottom piece is fiberglass. Paint it up, you'll never know. Again, as I say, to the best of my knowledge, this one still lingers in the maintenance building down in Philadelphia. It's never been back up. Again, it too had the top line moved, so you can tell where we found it that it was not the original, original location. <clears throat> Uh, this is one of my cohorts. We like Mike. He can lift 67 pounds up in the air on that post. I can't do that. <laughs> but again, you see that, uh, that pin that goes down in the top of the post. Um, we found two of them in the little town of New Berlin. Not only the town marker, but Penn's Creek marker. Both sitting in a corner, back in the shed. How long have you been there? Oh, long time, I say. And uh, with a little help from the from the borough maintenance guy, we uh, got the boat back where we think they belong. This is a new bridge, so whether they were there originally or not, we don't know for sure. But, uh, they're in a good place. I can't do it myself. You saw a picture of Mike. We get a lot of help from a lot of people. This is the teacher and two of the students from the Gettysburg Boat High School Boat Tech Program. And this is the first of the many signs that they redid for us. Okay. Uh, then they went on to do a couple more. Again, some of the students there at that Boat Tech Program at Gettysburg. Gettysburg still has four of these signs. Eh? They're, they're pretty good. Bigerville has three. I don't know where the other one was actually in pretty good shape. Somebody was in somebody's yard, so they sort of took care of it. Uh, this is the Franklin County Boat Tech School guys that uh, fix up this one for us. This one had been broken. The corner was broken off. You can see it was broken off the post right here, so that was welded back together. Um, some more of the uh, Gettysburg kit, Conalogo Creek. There's about eight of those things on Conewago Creek, different places. Conewago Creek is long. 
<laughs> it's really a long creek. And uh, again, it's a double sided sign. This is one of our guys, uh, Jim Carn, who lives up in Williamsport. He has probably painted a hundred of these things. He doesn't do repair work, but he does good paint work. And he basically covers that whole north central tier. Now he's at the point where he's repainting ones he painted before. Paint job only lasts so long. But Jim's done bunches and bunches of these things. Uh, there's a picture of Jim and his dog. He's funny. He says, yeah, I don't get out as much since the dog died. Is it? If any of you are dog owners, you know that's that's true. <laughs> you just don't walk as much when you don't have a dog to pay for. But uh, Jim's been a big part of the Keystone Marker Trust. <clears throat> New Buffalo. Uh, this couple had just paid to re-roof the church, which is over here. And this happened to have been relocated to the yard of the church. So they painted the paid the maintenance the, the contractor to repaint that too at the same time. So we appreciate that. Picture of my brother and I, remember that school zone one. Uh, I get my brother involved probably a lot more than he cares to be with these things, but <laughs> that's what family's for, right? Uh, yeah, this is out in uh, Indiana County. This post was knocked over ages and ages ago. And this guy in the middle, or a guy on the right here, those are his two sons. He saved it, put it in his garage. Well, years later, we found the sign. Somehow or another, I forget how it worked now, but I made the connection. He and his sons put the sign in the ground and we fixed up the post and the sign and put it back out there and it's now sitting on, on the side of the road there. This is unusual in Indiana County is the only place where some of these town signs are double-sided. Remember I mentioned most of them are single-sided, the creeks roads. Indiana County has several double-sided town signs, and I have no idea what the, you know, how that came to be. Uh, this guy runs a body shop near where I live, and uh, he's done some work. He, notice this line right here. Okay, when we found that sign, it said Green Village. Okay, and aimed for Major General Green, okay? <coughs> That's a fiberglass end, and he made the G in the end. Guy does good work, and we just, you know, couldn't get along without, without people like this. Uh, that's now back up where it belongs. Green Village is in Franklin County on Old Route 11, just north of Chambersburg. <clears throat> There's a picture of the back I was mentioning. See, right here and here, those are basically semicircular bands that fit down over the top of the post. The top of the post is round, and then you have a, a set screw that tightens them up and holds them on, holds them on the post. Often when these things get wonked, these bands get broken. So that's a very frequent repair that we have to make is replacing, replacing those bands. And here's a guy that does it. <laughs> this guy runs a machine shop not too far from me. Jamie has probably rewelded, oh God, parts of 50 of these signs over the last 15 years. And he's real good at, uh, at putting them in it. Welding cast iron is, is an art. It's not, even if you're a welder, you can do steel or stuff. Uh, cast iron's a whole different beast when it comes to welding. But again, just a, a variety of the people that, that have helped us. We take great pride in this one. Those are bullet holes. You often see that dancing deer sign on the side of the road it has a bullet hole in it where somebody took, well, somebody obviously had a field day on this one. And the county, uh, Homestale was up in Wayne County, which is super far in northeast Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and the lady got a hold of me and said, can you fix it? And I said, well, I can't, but I'm going to talk to Mike. Mike said, yeah, no trouble. <laughs> There's a lot of J.P. Weld in that sign. <laughs> but folks, they can be repaired. Much, sometimes a little expense, but, but it can be done. And... Uh, there's me, hard at work. 
This one, again, if you could see it, is painted green and, and yellow. Great, who cares? This one's painted the, the colors of the local high school football team, purple and gold. But they're taking care of it. That's what's important to us. This one, obviously, too, is on just a pipe. Who knows where the original post went? And uh, basically, guys and girls, we find them like this. We find them like this. And we make them look like this. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I take you back to that sign with all the towns in York County. I'm looking for a spotter. Doesn't pay well, but you have the satisfaction of saving history. So think about that. <laughs> Christian can tell you how to get in touch with me if you need to. Actually, keystonemarkertrust.org. Okay, look us up. We have a website there. We have a database of all the signs we, we know about. And there's there's literally hundreds of them. Um, I have to give some credit. People say, how did you get started? Well, <clears throat> we live in Perry County now. I work for the state park system, as was mentioned. And uh, when we first moved to, to Perry, as, as I traveled around the state, I used to see these things. Hey, they're pretty cool. So I'd stop and I'd take an index card and I'd write down what it said. And when I get home, I toss the card in my sock drawer or whatever. 35 years later, I retire. I got 272 cards in my drawer, some, some huge number. So I started making a database. And in the process, I ran across some other people that were doing the same thing. Uh, an old fellow down in uh, York or Lancaster County, he got a name of Claire Clauser, probably, uh, well, he's one of two people. He probably gets an awful lot of credit for starting to document these things. As far back as 1970, he was putting out little, little booklets that had the name of the town and what it said on them. There's another guy named Fred Yenerall, Y-E-N-E-R-A-L-L. -L. Google Fred Yenerall sometime. He went around this town, the state back in the 60s and 70s, taking pictures of anything that didn't move. <laughs> Bridges, churches, you know, you name it. He took pictures of it. And, and a lot of them, he took pictures of about 80 of these signs. And some of them, that's the only reason we know they ever were once, because of Yenerol's photos. So uh, anyhow, it, it's, been, it's, been, it's been fun. <laughs> and I thank you. You've been a good audience. <clears throat> uh, see, uh, a sample of there was made at the Gettysburg Road Tech School. I said it's Coriam, but it shows you exactly what the, the fonts are off from what's authentic. But it, it shows you the basic components of, of one of the Keystone markers. Uh, if anybody has any questions for Jack, he's 